Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. Now, if you're interested in recording your screen while you're working in Photoshop, maybe you'd like to make a tutorial, then ScreenFlow might be of interest to you. Let's jump in and see what it's all about. So here I am in ScreenFlow, and you can see that I'm already working on a tutorial. And I've got a few bits and pieces set up. Now, if this was a review of ScreenFlow, I might leave it till the end to tell you what I think about it. But let's not keep you in suspense. I actually love this piece of software. So let's have a look around and you'll understand why. So I've got all my footage in, but I'm going to go up to the top right hand corner here and just click on this icon. I'm going to work from right to left, in fact, during this outline. Now this is where I bring in all the assets and you can see that I've got uh, my screen recording, I've got some sound, I've got a logo and I've got the cover for the very beginning of my video as well. If I move the playhead across just by tapping, you see that's where that one is. Next across is my text and I can very easily add text. I'm going to scooch across right to the very end and just click the playhead here and you can see where I've added the text. If I click on that, you can have a look at some of the settings. Here I can change the font and the size and the alignment as you might expect, but I can also choose what color the background is as well, so it stands out a little more. Next across is my annotations. Now I've got no annotations in this particular one, so let's add one. I'll move the playhead to here and then click on this piece of footage and I'm going to click add annotation. Now here I can add an arrow, a line, a box, an outline of a box, or an outline of a circle, and I can choose the color, the opacity, the thickness, etc. So let's bring this playhead into the middle of the annotation, and I'm going to draw an outline of a green box, and I can do that just by clicking and dragging, and there it is. So now I'm going to click off that and bring the playhead back, and then when I play it, you'll see that that green box appears where we wanted it. There it is. But you'll notice it pops straight on. What I can do here is just simply right click, add starting and ending transitions, and now it will come on nice and gradually. And then it, when I finish with it, it will go back off again. I can do this with anything that I'm putting on screen, whether it be the text or these outlines. Very, very helpful indeed. If I'm not happy with it, I'm just going to just click on it and press delete, and off it goes. Here we have the call out properties, and these are very cool. Let's go and find somewhere where I might have a call out. Here's one, and what I'm doing here is I'm highlighting which tab that I'm on in Illustrator. Let's go and see if I can find another one. There might be another one somewhere. There's another one. If I click here, we'll be able to see it. This time it's down the bottom of a dialog box. And these are really easy to use. What I've got to do is click the footage that I want to add it to and add call out. Now at the moment I'm drawing freehand so I can draw a square or a circle but I can do the mouse cursor if I wish. Let's bring this playhead just so we can see it. Now you see that it's highlighted the mouse cursor there. I can also blur it should I wish or change the opacity should I wish so it stands out a bit more or less. I can zoom it too. So we can see what's going on a bit clearer. All these things are available to us on every clip. It's really very, very helpful. I'm just going to click off that and click on it again so as I can uh, get rid of it. I don't want to get rid of all the footage, of course. There we go. And now let's move on to the screen recording. Now this time it's showing me that I can alter the show mouse pointer. At the moment, you can see that my pointer is here. Use the call out there to show you where it is. And I can use the pointer zoom, so as it comes up bigger or smaller, should I wish. And I can change the effect of what happens when it clicks. So, uh, for example, with radar, red lines come out of it when it clicks down to make it a bit more visible. We can change the pointer sizes and the types as well. And, of course, and as well, we can change the opacity of them as well, so they're not quite so obtrusive. I'm going to put that back to 100%. There we go. Next, we've got the sound. Let's click on a sound clip so the bits and pieces come available to us. Volume, of course, speaks for itself. 
ducking and ducking what that does is it will bring down the sound clip on the video if you start a narration and it will do that automatically and nice and gradually too works really very nicely at the bottom here we've got filter remove background noise a really helpful way to remove the background noise if i'm honest it works incredibly well okay let's then go over to the last tab which is our video properties and we can do all kinds of things here as well should we wish we can uh, crop it in a bit if we don't want to see that part we can uh, make a reflection if it doesn't take up the whole screen of course and all kinds of other bits and pieces so you can see i can do an awful lot here now it might seem like it gets complicated but actually not at all the way the workflow works here in screenflow keeps it nice and together and very very simple talking of simplicity when i'm finished i can come up to file and i can publish straight to youtube vimeo or as a flash project straight from here and that's very helpful and time saving there's of course a lot of other things you can do through the menus and in the tabs this was just a brief overview so there we go that's screen flow i love it i hope you will do too there should be a link somewhere on the screen so you can go and find out more details from their website i'm eric reno thank you very much for watching i'll see you again soon